The Electronic Frontier Foundation is an international non-profit digital rights group based in San Francisco, California. The foundation was formed in July, 1990 by John Gilmore, John Perry Barlow and Mitch Kapoor to promote Internet civil liberties. F provides funds for legal defense in court, presents amicus curie briefs, defends individuals and new technologies from what it considers abusive legal threats, works to expose government malfeasance, provides guidance to the government and courts, organizes political action and mass mailings, supports some new technologies which it believes preserve personal freedoms and online civil liberties, maintains a database and websites of related news and information, monitors and challenges potential legislation that it believes would infringe on personal liberties and fair use and solicits a list of what it considers abusive patents with intentions to defeat those that it considers without merit. F also provides tips, tools, how TOS, tutorials, and software for safer online communications. History Topic Foundation The Electronic Frontier Foundation was formed in July 1990 by John Gilmore, John Perry Barlow and Mitch Kapoor in response to a series of actions by law enforcement agencies that led them to conclude that the authorities were gravely uninformed about emerging forms of online communication, and that there was a need for increased protection for Internet civil liberties. In April 1990, Barlow had been visited by a U.S. Federal Bureau of Investigation agent in relation to the theft and distribution of the source code for a series of Macintosh ROMs. Barlow described the visit as complicated by the agent's fairly complete unfamiliarity with computer technology. I realized right away that before I could demonstrate my innocence, I would first have to explain to him what guilt might be. Barlow felt that his experience was symptomatic of a great paroxysm of governmental confusion during which everyone's liberties would become at risk. Barlow posted an account of this experience to the Well Online community and was contacted by Mitch Kapoor, who had had a similar experience. The pair agreed that there was a need to defend civil liberties on the Internet. Kapoor agreed to fund any legal fees associated with such a defense and the pair contacted New York lawyers Rabinowitz, Boudin, Standard, Krinsky and Lieberman about defending several computer hackers from a Harper's Magazine forum on computers and freedom who had been the target of secret service raids. This generated a large amount of publicity which led to offers of financial support from John Gilmore and Steve Wozniak. Barlow and Kapoor continued to research conflicts between the government and technology and in June 1990, Barlow posted online the influential article entitled Crime and Puzzlement in which Barlow announced his and Kapoor's plans to create an organization to raise and disburse funds for education, lobbying, and litigation in the areas relating to digital speech and the extension of the Constitution into cyberspace. This generated further reaction and support for the ideas of Barlow and Kapoor. In late June, Barlow held a series of dinners in San Francisco with major figures in the computer industry to develop a coherent response to these perceived threats. Barlow considered that, the actions of the FBI and Secret Service were symptoms of a growing social crisis, future shock. America was entering the information age with neither laws nor metaphors for the appropriate protection and conveyance of information itself. Barlow felt that to confront this, a formal organization would be needed. He hired Kathy Cook as press coordinator and began to set up what would become the Electronic Frontier Foundation. The Electronic Frontier Foundation was formally founded on July 10, 1990, by Kapoor and Barlow, who very soon after elected Gilmore, Wozniak, and Stuart Brand to join them on the board of directors. Initial funding was provided by Kapoor, Wozniak, and an anonymous benefactor. In 1990, Mike Godwin joined the organization as its first staff counsel. Then in 1991, Esther Dyson and Jerry Berman joined the F board of directors. By 1992, Cliff Fagallo became the director of the original office, and in December 1992, Jerry Berman became the acting executive director of the organization as a whole, based in a new second office. <laughs> Early cases 
The creation of the organization was motivated by the massive search and seizure on Steve Jackson games executed by the United States Secret Service early in 1990. Similar but officially unconnected law enforcement raids were being conducted across the United States at about that time as part of a state federal task force called Operation Sunderville. GURPS Cyberpunk, one of the game company's projects, was mistakenly labeled as a handbook for computer crime, and the Secret Service raided the offices of Steve Jackson Games. The search warrant for the raid was deemed hastily issued, and the games company soon after claimed unauthorized access as well as tampering of their emails. While phone calls were protected by legislation, digital emails were an early concept and had not been considered to fall under the right to personal privacy. The Steve Jackson Games case was EFF's first high-profile case, was the major rallying point around which F began promoting computer and internet-related civil liberties. EFF's second big case was Bernstein v. United States led by Cindy Cohn, in which programmer and professor Daniel J. Bernstein sued the government for permission to publish his encryption software, Snuffle, and a paper describing it. More recently, the organization has been involved in defending Edward Felton, John Lech Johansson and Dmitry Sklyarov. <laughs> <laughs> Expansion and development The organization was originally located at Mitch Kapoor's Kapoor Enterprises offices. By the fall of 1993, the main F offices were consolidated into a single office headed by Executive Director Jerry Berman. During this time, some of EFF's attention focused on influencing national policy to the dislike of some of the members of the organization. In 1994, Berman parted ways with F and formed the Center for Democracy and Technology while Drew Taubman briefly took the reins as executive director. In 1995, under the auspices of executive director Laurie Fina, after some downsizing and in an effort to regroup and refocus on their base of support, the organization moved offices to San Francisco, California. There, it took up temporary residence at John Gilmore's Toad Hall, and soon afterward moved into the Hams building at 1550 Bryant Street. After FINA moved on to the F Board of Directors for a while, the organization was led briefly by Tara Lemmy, followed by Barry Steinhardt, who had come from the closely allied Technology and Liberty Program at the American Civil Liberties Union, and eventually returned to the ACLU. Not long before EFF's move into new offices at 454 Shopwell Street in SF's Mission District, Mike Godwin departed. Longtime legal director Shari Steele was appointed as executive director, and staff attorney Cindy Cohn became the legal director. In the spring of 2006, F announced the opening of an office again in Washington, D.C., with two new staff attorneys. In 2012, F began a fundraising campaign for the renovation of a building located at 815 Eddy Street in San Francisco, to serve as its new headquarters. The move was completed in April, 2013. On April 1, 2015, Shari Steele stepped down as executive director. Cindy Cohn became the new executive director. Corinne McSherry became the legal director and Kurt Opsal became the general counsel. <laughs> Des Cracker By the mid-1990s the F was becoming seriously concerned about the refusal of the U.S. government to license any secure encryption product for export unless it utilized key recovery and claims that governments could not decrypt information when protected by DES, continuing even after the public breaking of the code in the first of the DES challenges. They coordinated and supported the construction of the FDES Cracker nicknamed Deep Crack, using special purpose hardware and software and costing only $210,000. 
This brought the record for breaking a message down to 56 hours on the 17th of July 1998 and to under 24 hours on the 19th of January 1999 in conjunction with distributed.net. The F published the plans and source code for the cracker. Within 4 years the advanced encryption standard was standardized as a replacement for DES. Topic: Activities. Topic: Legislative activity. The F is a leading supporter of the Email Privacy Act. Topic: Litigation. The F regularly brings and defends lawsuits at all levels of the U.S. legal system in pursuit of its goals and objectives. The F has long taken a stance against strategic lawsuits against public participation (SLAP) as attempts to stymie free speech and advocated for effective anti-SLAP legislation. Many of the most significant technology law cases have involved the F, including MGM Studios, Inc. v. Grokster, Ltd., Apple v. Does, and others. Awards The F organizes two sets of awards to promote work in accordance with its goals and objectives. The F Pioneer Awards are awarded annually to recognize individuals who in its opinion are leaders who are extending freedom and innovation on the electronic frontier." In 2017, the honorees were Chelsea Manning, Mike Masnick and Annie Game. The F Cooperative Computing Awards are a series of four awards meant to encourage ordinary Internet users to contribute to solving huge scientific problems. To be awarded to the first individual or group who discovers a prime number with a significant record number of decimal digits. The awards are funded by an anonymous donor. The awards are $50,000 to the first individual or group who discovers a prime number with at least 1 million decimal digits, awarded April 6, 2000 $100,000 to the first individual or group who discovers a prime number with at least 10 million decimal digits, awarded October 14, 2009 $150,000 to the first individual or group who discovers a prime number with at least 100 million decimal digits $250,000 to the first individual or group who discovers a prime number with at least 1 billion decimal digits. <laughs> Patent busting project The Patent Busting Project is an Electronic Frontier Foundation F initiative challenging patents that the organization claims are illegitimate and suppress innovation or limit online expression. The initiative launched on April 19, 2004 and involves two phases, documenting the damage caused by these patents, and submitting challenges to the United States Patent and Trademark Office USPTO. Topic publications F publishes through several outlets such as the online periodical effector ISSN 1062-9424, as well as its websites, blogs, and on social networking services. EFF's first book was published in 1993 as The Big Dummy's Guide to the Internet, a beginner's how-to manual by contracted technical writer Adam Gaffin, and made available for free download in many formats. MIT Press published it in paperback form in 1994 as Everybody's Guide to the Internet ISBN 9780262576 The online edition was updated regularly throughout the 1990s and early 2000s, and translated into dozens of languages. 
The organization's second book, Protecting Yourself Online ISBN 9780062515124, an overview of digital civil liberties, was written in 1998 by technical writer Robert B. Gelman and F. Communications Director Stanton McCandlish, and published by HarperCollins. A third book, Cracking Des: Secrets of Encryption Research, Wiretap Politics and Chip Design ISBN 9781565925205, , focusing on EFF's Des Cracker project, was published the same year by O'Reilly Media. A digital book, P. W. Ning Tomorrow, an anthology of speculative fiction, was produced in 2015 as part of EFF's 25th anniversary activities, and includes contributions from 22 writers, including Charlie Jane Anders, Paolo Bassigalopi, Lauren Bukies, David Brin, Pat Cadigan, Corey Doctorow, Neil Gaiman, Eileen Gunn, Cameron Hurley, James Patrick Kelly, Ramez Nam, Annalie Nevitz, Hanu Rajanyemi, Rudy Rucker, Louis Shine. Bruce Sterling, and Charles Yu. The Electronic Frontier Foundation's blog, DeepLinks, is a major section of its main website at f.org. The F sent a video message of support to global grassroots movement CryptoParty. <laughs> Recent activism The F was active in the United States presidential election 2016 because of online phishing related to the controversy over fabrication of election results. J. Alex Haldeman, a computer security professor at the University of Michigan, wrote an article that was published in Medium in 2016 stating he thought it was advisable to have a recount on some of the election results from states like Wisconsin, Michigan, and Pennsylvania. In retaliation for Haldeman standing up for the uncertain election results, a hacker sent anti-Semitic and racist emails to students at University of Michigan signed from Haldeman. The F publicizes these controversies and promotes the reduction of online phishing. <laughs> <laughs> Software The F has developed some software and browser add-ons, including Switzerland, HTTPS Everywhere, and Privacy Badger. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Secure Messaging Scorecard. The F has also conducted a project named Secure Messaging Scorecard, which evaluated apps and tools based on a set of seven specific criteria ranging from whether messages were encrypted in transit to whether or not the code had been recently audited." Version 1.0 is accessible here. As of April 21, 2017, a revised version is under development. Support. Charity Navigator has given the F an overall rating of 4 out of 4 stars, including 4 stars for its financial efficiency and capacity. Financial F as of 2014 had $23 million in assets, having received multiple grants or donations above $1 million in its history. On February 18, 2004, the F announced that it had received a bequest of $1.2 million from the estate of F member Leonard Zubkoff, a software developer and entrepreneur. It used $1 million of this money to establish the F Endowment Fund for Digital Civil Liberties. Beginning in 2010, the F began regularly receiving income from the Humble Indie Bundle. In 2010, these donations made up 14% of EFF's total revenue. Between 2011 and 2014, the amount received from Humble Bundle reached $7.5 million or 23% of the F total revenues. In 2011, the F received $1 million from Google as part of a settlement of a class action related to privacy issues involving Google Buzz. 
The Electronic Privacy Information Center and seven other privacy-focused nonprofits protested that the plaintiffs' lawyers and Google had, in effect, arranged to give the majority of those funds to organizations that are currently paid by Google to lobby for or to consult for the company. An additional $1 million was obtained from Facebook in a similar settlement. In December 2014, the Adams Charitable Foundation granted EFA $3 million endowment to fund the new Adams Chair for Internet Rights. Other The Agitprop art group Psychological Industries has independently issued buttons with pop culture tropes such as the logo of the Laughing Man from the anime series Ghost in the Shell, Stand Alone Complex with the original The Catcher in the Rye quotation replaced with the slogan of Anonymous, a bleeding roller derby jammer, and the We Can Do It! Woman often misidentified as Rosie the Riveter on a series of buttons on behalf of the F. In late June 2014, the F flew a GEFAFLUG as 105 GD, 4 blimp owned by, and in conjunction with, Greenpeace over the NSA's Bluffdale based Utah Data Center in protest against its purported illegal spying. Criticism <coughs> 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 Yasha Levine, writing for magazine The Baffler, described the F as AstroTurf created and funded by Silicon Valley, stating they don't actually defend rights for the users of Internet platforms, instead defending large Internet companies which are, according to him, EFF's biggest benefactors by lobbying for said companies' interests and deviating attention from their business practices especially regarding copyright and privacy to government practices regarding privacy and censorship, as well as actually lobbying in in ways that actively harm Internet users. See also <laughs> <laughs> Notes <laughs>